Welcome, this is a 30 minute slow flow practice. And uh, in fact, if you did a practice online on, on YouTube or something like that, you can turn anything into a slow flow. Uh, same as with watching movies on Netflix, you can actually change the setting to like reduce the speed to 0.75 or 0.5. And conversely, you can actually speed up programs as well and watch your favorite shows in like half the amount of time. So that's just a neat feature, but uh, I guess the purpose of slow flow is just to go in a way that's uh, methodical and uh, not a rush and to just control your breath to go slow with it. So stand tall near the front of your mat, bring your arms alongside you and take a big breath in and then a big breath out. Adding to it this time with your inhale, reach your arms up into the air. And then as you exhale, bring your arms down. Making the whole movement your entire breath. Again, inhale, reach your arms up. And changing on an exhale, swan dive, hinge at your hips, bow forward and touch your fingers to the floor. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine, inhale. And then exhale and fold in. Reverse swan dive, inhale and come all the way up. And exhale, bring your arms back down alongside you. Again, inhale, arms up. And exhale, dive forward, touch the floor. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. And this time, plant your hands and step back to plank pose as you exhale. Pause at the top with an inhale. And then lower your knees as you exhale. Inhale and straight, stay strong with your arms. Push your hands away from each other. Lift your chin. And then exhale, lower down all the way to the floor. Inhale, lift up to cobra or low cobra if you like to stay lower. And then exhale and push back to downward facing dog. I'm so upset I said stray instead of stay. I've already blown the perfect class so I can uh, not be so nervous anymore. Stray here. This is an opportunity just to check in with your breath to see what rate it is going at. At the end of your next exhalation, slowly step forward to the front of your space. When you inhale, lengthen your spine, lift up halfway. And then exhale and dive in. Rise all the way up and reach your arms up high. Touch your hands together. And as you exhale, bring your hands down in front of your heart. Again, big breath in and big breath out. Now bend your knees, touch your fingers to the floor and then inhale and float your arms up for chair position, pausing and holding here. You're always welcome to explore options. Sit down lower. You could even bring your arms alongside you and tilt forward more like a downhill skier just to isolate the focus more on strengthening and heating your legs as opposed to sometimes what can happen if you're upright like this with the arms, which is a bit of a strain for the low back. On your next exhale, dive forward, touch down, halfway lift, lengthen your spine, and then step your right foot back behind you, lower your knee to the floor, and on an inhale, float your arms up into the air for a low lunge position. 
The exact position of your hips is uh, debatable. You can change it. So you can move your hips back to put more weight into the back leg. So much so you could lift your front heel or even the front foot. Um, alternatively, you can move your weight forward to get more stretch on the front thigh of the uh, back leg. And then reach and extend the arms up high. One last breath in. Then turn to the floor, hands down. Tuck your back toes, push off of your back foot, step forward, and then step back with the other foot. Lower your knee, wait for your inhale, and float your arms up into the air. Push your arms straight. Just explore how the pose can change, moving your hips back, lifting maybe the front heel or front foot, versus then moving your hips forward. This is one of the poses where the knee going past the ankle over the toes is usually okay with your back knee down, just not as much compressive force on that front leg. And then when you fold forward, it helps to move your hips back first on an exhale, plant your hands down, and then step back to plank pose. So just offering with slow flow, I think it's a bit more of an accessible practice than say a power flow or fast flow or um, snow flow. Uh, holding strong here, so with slow flow, just the option is of course to have your knees down as you lower down halfway or all the way. And then inhale for your back bend of choice. And eventually move back to downward facing dog. I say eventually because I like to linger a little bit in cobra pose is my favorite. And then push back to downward facing dog. When I'm a student in class, sometimes I get caught because I like to stay a little longer in that pose and then uh, faster flows. All of a sudden there's like three or four poses that have occurred afterwards that I'm catching up to. Look forward between your hands at the end of your next exhalation. A step or you could playfully hop forward to the front of your space. Lengthen your spine, lift up halfway. And exhale, fold in. Re-bend your knees, float your arms up into the air. Rising up for chair pose. Again, you could go arms forward or arms alongside you. Getting ready to jump off of a ski jump. Those here practicing uh, in Victoria know that there is going to be a blizzard tonight and tomorrow. Very rare, but very exciting. Rise all the way to stand. Reach your arms high into the air. Stretch all the way. And then join your hands together in front of your heart. Lean over to your right leg and then lift your left knee. Hold your knee. Pull your knee up as high as you can. And that's a stretch for your glute muscles. And that's, of course, one position that you can be in. Uh, another position is just to bring your knee in the line of your hip. Now hold under your thigh and then from there extend your leg straighter. There are going to be a few of you that can get your legs straight all the way already. So just re-bend your knee, lift your knee higher, keep dropping the thigh into your hands, and then extend your legs straighter from there. I'm not a good example because I don't get the legs straight horizontal. And then of course you can just go higher and higher and higher. Okay, and then lower your foot and switch sides. Lean to your left foot, lift your right knee. Again, pull the knee higher, 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 higher. That last higher, I think only dogs could hear. And then stay. Or you can drop down and then focus on the stretch. So knee at the height of your hip, pull your knee back into your hip socket, push forward with the knee so you can stand up tall, and then hold under your thigh and extend your leg straighter. This is an intense stretch for me and it's underwhelming when I see the visual of this. It's not very impressive. Or you can lift the knee higher and then extend your leg straighter that way. Or again, higher and extend your leg straighter. Three, two, one. And then lower your foot down. Wait with an inhale. And exhale it out. 
Again, taking your time with your breath, inhale and float your arms up again and full reach, reach up. It's not just arms up, but it's a stretch up. And then exhale, hinge at your hips, dive forward, touch your fingers down. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine and then step your left foot back behind you. This time, keep your back knee lifted. We're giving the left the opportunity to go first this time. And then on an inhale, rise up, place your hands to your hips. It's hip to be square, so square your hips, which in most cases means to bring the back hip a little bit forward, back leg hip. Um, but just notice that uh, for me, I was overdoing that, overcompensating, and now I actually have to do the reverse to get the hips truly square. I have to move, in this case, the left hip back when most people, most in quotations, have to actually bring that left hip forward. Then on an inhale, float your arms up into the air. Actively ground down with your feet and reach the arms up. So again, it's not just that the arms are in the position of above your head, but there's a stretch component where you reach and you lift and it is okay for the shoulders to lift up in that situation. The rib cage lift, the, the same stretch you'd make if you rolled out of bed, especially if, if you had five layers of clothes on last night. Inhale one last time and on an exhale, tuck your hands down, spring off your back foot and step your right foot back, bends into your front knee and then rise up, hands to your hips. And then this one, you can check by literally putting the palms of your hands to the iliac crest there, the, the side of your hips, and then just point. And if your hips aren't a square, they'll literally be off. And on the other side, my mind go off to the left, but oftentimes people might go off to the right here. So squaring the hips, settling in lower, and then float your arms up into the air. And this is really just a warrior one variation with the back heel lifted. It makes it more accessible to square your hips to accomplish the form where when your heel is down, it's more challenging. Reach your arms up high. I like slow flow because you can hold the position longer just to build more heat. And then on an exhale, plant your hands down and step back to plank pose pause here in the top of a push-up. I also like slow flow because it gives me a chance to just talk about nothing that has anything to do with anything. And it's just an opportunity to kill time and have a uh, avenue for people to listen to me. For the studio the other night, I was teaching a class and um, it was a hybrid, so there was live stream as well. But the the attachment to the headset kept falling out, so then I had to hold it like a uh, stand-up comedian holds a microphone. And, and then that started to fall apart too. It was even worse. Okay, everyone enjoying plank position? One last breath in. And then on an exhale, push back, downward facing dog, side out. Oh, that was a terrible story. On an inhale, lift your right leg back behind you. And then exhale, knee to nose, curl in. And two more times, lift your right leg back and knee in. And last time, go slow, don't go so fast. And then pause and hold here. Just gonna offer a little bit more instruction for those who have challenge stepping your foot forward. So literally lower your back knee step the back, uh, the right foot forward and then literally grab your foot your ankle with your right hand and then pull it forward then lift your back knee turn your left foot to the left setting your front heel in line with the center of your back arch foundation reflects intention so take your time setting it up and then on an inhale bending deep into your front knee rise up for warrior two pose have the arms up and then as you exhale, settle into the front leg, add a little bit of an angel wing. It's nice when there's a shadow created by the lights. Okay, holding here, 
still maintaining a flow, but not necessarily long, long holds. Place your right forearm to your thigh and then reach your left arm in line with your ear. I can hear some of you say, well, why did we hold plank? Plank is different. Plank is a purpose. Actively reach and extend your left arm long. Settle in a little bit lower into your front leg. Uh, the likelihood is that you start to get a stretch through the, the inner line of the legs here. And then one more breath. On your exhale, turn to the floor, bring both hands down, step back to plank pose. Again, option here to go knees down and then lower down halfway or all the way. Then lower your hips for cobra or keep the hips lifted for up dog. Rise up for your back bend, enjoy, savor, and push back to downward facing dog. So I'm someone I like, uh, I don't know if I like describing it as slow flow or whether it's just mindful flow or awareness flow. Uh, on an inhale, lift your left leg back, but it is nice to hold positions for a period of time to really truly appreciate them. Exhale, knee in towards your nose. Again, lift your left leg back. Exhale, knee towards your nose. And one last time, left leg back, knee in, and then just watching how I literally will do this sometimes, lower the back knee, and then step the foot as far forward as you can, pull it forward, and then lift your back knee. Uh, most people actually can't literally step the foot forward without lifting a hand or doing some something to adjust there. Turn your right foot to the right. And then on an inhale, rise up for warrior two pose. So it's like that Michael Jackson song. You are not alone in having uh, a challenge when you step forward. Which, yeah, I, I just pretend I didn't reference Michael Jackson. Actively reach and extend out in warrior two. It can be helpful to practice with a mirror where you can settle in lower. I have a, an iPad here that is actually showing the online class that's happening live. So I can literally see my form and see how cool adding the angel wings is. Maybe a few break dance moves and then go left forearm to your thigh and then reach your right arm in line with your ear. Oh, that was pretty good. It's like 10 seconds delayed. Reach and extend, keep your chin lifted. Settle in a little bit lower. And then on an exhale, turn to the floor, bring your hands down, step back, plank pose. Again, up to you, knees up or down, just being mindful. So if it's knees up, it's still slow. Lower down halfway, pause and hold. No rush, no rush, Mookie. And then inhale, lift up for your back bend. And then push back to downward facing dog. Yogi's choice for side plank, so a little bit easier is come forward towards plank, lower your right knee down, pivot on your knee to take your foot off the mat to the right and roll to the inner edge of your left foot to reach your left arm up into the air. If you want a bit more challenge, of course, you could stack the feet on top of each other and reach your arm up into the air. Time is of the essence. It's a shorter practice today, so not flowing between sides. Just go right to the other side, which is the left. So left to the other side. Again, you could have your left knee down. Take your foot off of the mat to the side. and then turn to the floor, hand down, and lower all the way onto your belly this time. Pause here, take a deep breath in, and deep breath out. Then bend both knees, reach back to grab hold of both ankles or the tops of your feet, and from there, kick your feet into your hands, and use that to lift your chest, lift your feet, lift your knees, 
lift your eyes. Well, maybe where you're looking with your eyes. It would be weird if the eyes started to move independently from the head. Take one last breath in, and then use the lift here that you create from your chest. Just release one ankle first, put your hand on your shoulder, and then release the other one. And then using the strength that you've harnessed, lift up for your backbend cobra or upward facing dog. And then exhale and push back, downward facing dog. Look forward between your hands, spring your legs, step or hop forward towards the front of your space. Halfway lift, lengthen your spine. Exhale and fold in. And reverse swan dive, inhale, come all the way up. Reach up high and join your hands together back in front of your heart. Dancer's pose, lean to your right foot, lift your left foot behind you and grab hold of your foot. Lots of versions of the pose. You can hold the little toe side. You can hold the big toe side. That one actually becomes a twist. There's even a version where you hold over the toes, kind of an in-between neutral territory. We call that the Swiss version. Or you could even hold your ankle as well. So just lots of options. And then from there, kick your foot back, tilt forward. Option to add a little bit extra challenge here with some rebounds where you tilt forward, touch your right hand down, kick your foot back to rise up. And do that two more times. One plus two is three, three total. And then last one, come up, then lower your foot down and switch. Lift your right foot, grab hold of your ankle, outside, inside, or over the toes. Just notice if there's one that you habitually do all the time and try, try something different. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Maybe in a year or two you like the different version. Kick your foot back, tilt forward. To do the rebounds, it helps to have the standing knee bent just a little bit so that you can tilt at your hips to touch your fingers down. And again, the power in this one is actually to go slow and not to just go really, really fast and touch down and then swing up. We become masters when we go slow at things first. Okay, and then release your foot. Have your feet a little wider than your hips and turn your feet out and sit down for a squat position. So this is something I can do fine now, uh, but it can be challenging either on your knee or your back. In this case, I'm in a rounded position. So uh, lifting the heels is harder on the knee but easier on the back as I'm in more of a neutral position. And then to make it easier on the knees, this is a weird one if you have a block, but you can literally sit on a block like this. It looks like you're birthing a yoga block, which would be quite funny. It, that'd be a, a million dollar uh, idea to turn block designs into like different characters or figures so that you can have like your favorite uh, Star Wars or Disney character as the block itself that you're also birthing. Okay, that was weird. Option, stay here, or hands down, going for crow pose. So lift your heels, lean forward, put your shins to your upper arms, and then leaning, leaning, leaning forward, maybe lift a foot, then the other foot, or maybe get to a point where you can lean so far forward you can lift both feet, grip with your fingers, into the floor, push your arms a little straighter, pull the knees towards each other, pull your feet towards each other, one last breath, and then touch your feet down. Just go step back, step back into all fours position. That can be a little challenging on your wrists, so just flip one hand so that you're on the back of the hand with your fingers pointing towards your knee, and then just play around with moving your weight either forward or back, and either having your arms straight or a little bit bent. I, I need to have it a little bit bent. And then switch the other side. Some of my friends can do both arms at the same time straight 
go into plank and do a push-up with the hands in this position. So I can only do one at a time, and I think that's more appropriate. Okay, and then back to regular position. Lift your left leg back and your right arm forward. It's always nice to have a little bit of choice. It's empowering. So two options. Well, three is one is to stay here. And then two is to curl in and go elbow to knee and reach forward and back. Or if you want an additional thigh stretch, similar to dancer's pose, is grab hold of the big toe side of your left foot with your right hand, kick your foot into your hand, twist, and lift your knee higher. By taking the balance out of the pose, it gives you an opportunity to stretch a little further. Okay, and then release, lower your hand, lower your knee, and switch sides. Lift your right leg back, reach your left arm forward, pause and hold, or Curl in elbow to knee, reach forward and back. And then option to bend your knee, grab hold of your foot as well. Kick your foot into your hand, lift your knee higher, twist further towards the left. We're gonna move to a pigeon variation in a seated Pose. So if you're someone who just loves pigeon, and if we don't do pigeon, you'll write in your journal tonight how you didn't get to do pigeon, then by all means do pigeon. But uh, just lower your knee, lower your hand, move your feet off to one side, and then sit down. And from here, in the seated position, lean back and cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Just above the knee, but in this position, it's kind of below the knee. And then it's the figure four shape you make standing often or the thread the needle position. And then with your hands, lift up your chest, move your shoulders back, look forward. There are various names for this pose. I don't know how appropriate they are. I hesitate to say them. And then a switch. So have your right foot down. It can even help to lift the hips momentarily to gain access to crossing your ankle over your thigh. And then to go further, it's to move the, in this case, the right foot, the foot that's on the ground closer to your hips, and then also walk your hands in and push your chest up, lift up taller. I'm just not showing that because I don't really need to go further. I'm happy where I am. Okay, and then uncross your ankle and then join the bottoms of your feet together. I like sitting up on a block just to make it a bit more accessible here. So Baddha Konasana, bottoms of the feet together, open your knees out to the side. And if you'd like to hinge forward, you can hook your shins with your elbows as you bow in. There's so many great names for poses. So this one, Baddha Konasana, Bound Angle Pose, okay. I've heard a few others, Butterfly and Cobbler's Pose. Uh, next one though is called Half Lord of the Fishes Pose, Arda Matsyandrasana, not full Lord of the Fishes, just half. So pull the knees up and then move your right foot forward a bit so you can literally grab your left foot and pull it to the outside of your right hip underneath the right leg. Then lift your right leg up and over your left. And there's lots of ways to do it. Sort of the standard is to hook your elbow and bring your right hand behind you. There's versions where you bind. Um, I sometimes just hold both hands to my knee and take the twist out. And that's a conscious decision in my practice to twist a little less because there was a period in my 20s and early 30s, even though I'm still 22. Um, but in my early 30s, where I was really pushing to try to go to the maximum edge, and at some point, twists aren't therapeutic anymore, and they can be quite detrimental to your body. And you learn that through pain. Um, and 
either you learn the lesson or you don't. Uh, inhale, untwist. You're welcome to do a little reverse twist, countering that. And then just switch to the other side. There is the spinorama move, which some people love to do, but it's just right heel to the outside of your left hip. And then again, you could wrap your arm around, you can hook it, or you can go for a bind. Yogi's choice. We'll do one more pose and then uh, one minute of seated meditation to finish up the practice. If you are someone who wants a Shavasana, you can always head into that right away, but just knowing that we're nearing the end. Okay, and then untwist again. You can do a little counter twist. Now stretch both legs straight forward. Again, I'm on a block just because I don't have the flexibility of some. So we often think of this pose as a stretch for the back of the legs. For some people, it's a stretch of their spine. They're maybe not the spine, but the upper back. For those that aren't flexible, it's not a stretch for the back. It's aggravating for the back. So bending the knees a little bit, being on a block, and even pulling each butt flesh. You've got two butts left and right back gives you an opportunity to try to sit upright first and then hinge at your hips. So you isolate the stretch to your hamstrings and then round in. And pause and breathe here. So depending on your flexibility, this is a cooling pose, one that you wind down your practice with. If you're less flexible, this isn't cooling at all. And it's hard to understand how it could be because it's so intense on the stretch, and then also to maintain integrity in the pose. Okay, and then last minute, be in a seated position, either sitting on your heels, you could sit with your legs out in front of you, um, you can do an, a full lotus position, or you can do uh, a position where you line the heels with each other, like I'm doing, siddhasana. But one minute on the clock. And I know some of you who practice know that I actually have a clock here and you might be able to even hear it tick by. So I'm going to count to 60 for the ticks. Namaste.